we got a little song we say to welcome our guests. Come on, y'all sing it. Glad you came. meaningful and life-changing to help you move through the challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. We are the heirs of God and the joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Isn't that right? Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about that. The heirs of God and uh, being uh, the joint heirs with Christ. And, and we, we looked at the fact that since the resurrection, the resurrection is where the will of God was released. The will. We talked about wills that when, when people die in families and so forth and there are wills that uh, are released that uh, and give instructions as to uh, what the inheritance is and where it goes and so forth. And, and so God uh, says that, and that you are my heirs. As a matter of fact, we, we referenced over at Romans chapter number 8 and verse 17 said, and if children, talking about us, then heirs, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And, and so we've been dealing with who we are in Christ as sons. We are sons. And we, we talked about how being a son sets us up to receive everything that God has uh, for us. And, and that God uh, sent Jesus to uh, get us prepared for eternity with him. But he also sent Jesus to give us instructions as to what he wanted to do with us while we are in the here and now. And so we've been dealing with that. Last week we talked about the benefits of being an heir. Benefits of being an heir. And so today I want to go a little further. And if you will, go over to 2 Kings chapter number 2. And go down to verse number 9. We will reference some of the earlier verses, but just want to get to um, verse number 9 through 14. And so it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elijah said, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, my father my father, the chariot of Israel, and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And then he also had struck the water. It was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? I want to talk about for a few moments the mentality of a joint heir with Christ. Will you look at your neighbor? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor. Oh, good neighbor. Good, good neighbor. Say, let's help Bishop talk about the mentality of a joint heir with Christ. Turn on the other side or get another hand. Find somebody else. Say neighbor. Oh, good neighbor. I don't know about you, but I want to know what is the mentality of a joint heir with Christ. Now drop those hands and give God praise as you take your seat. 
Anytime that a preacher preaches or a teacher teaches, the word hits them first. The instruction comes to them initially. What I'm going to say today may be a word of preparation for something that somebody needs to get ready to do. It may be prophetic in many of us. Uh, a signal that we need to shift to think like an heir uh, because when we look at Galatians, we use some of that reference over there. It says that uh, you are no longer slaves, but you are sons. And of course, when we talk about sons, we are not talking about gender. We're talking about the children of God. You're no longer slaves. And a slave, a servant does not know what the master's plan is, but a son does. And because of Jesus, you have been adopted into the family of God. Now you are the seed of Abraham. And everything that was coming to Abraham, all the blessings that were upon him and Christ, uh, you are recipients of the same. And so what we're going to say today um, may challenge us and, and cause us to have to think really deeply about what we're doing as we prepare, uh, speaking about having a certain mentality of a joint heir of Christ. Now, uh, when we look at this, we, we, uh, the idea here of uh, the message is leaving the next generation a great inheritance leaving the next generation a great inheritance. I, I really want to teach us the importance of, of uh, setting the next generation up to succeed. Don't y'all think we ought to do that? Uh, set up the next generation to succeed, to do well, to prosper on their way. Let me ask you a question, parents. When you die, what kind of shape will it leave your children? When you leave these mundane shores, what kind of shape will it leave your children and even your grandchildren? And then uh, second, will they be able to keep moving higher or will they uh, be left struggling trying to make it? Huh? There are many problems that plague the family. We've got great challenges and attacks against the family. The family, uh, and understand that, uh, that one of the greatest problems that plagues the family is not the devil and his attacks on the family. We know he attacks the family, isn't that right? He attacks marriages, he attacks uh, children, uh, and so forth. Uh, but it's not what others are doing to hinder the family because those things happen. They, uh, that there are all kinds of things that try to hinder the family. But uh, the greatest challenge uh, for the family uh, is the family's inability to make a proper transfer to the next generation. That's where the greatest problem is. We, 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 got, we got faith and, and spirituality. We can deal with whatever the enemy throws. We got word for that. And, and what other people do uh, and culture tries to do to the family. Uh, but our issue becomes the inability to make a proper transfer to the next generation. And, and, and somehow we, can I talk to African American people in particular, not everybody, but this word is for somebody you might already be doing or what I'm going to say today but can I tell us that many times we have missed it huh other other cultures and people understand this for uh, th this is absolutely a significant part of life making a proper transfer to the next generation uh, it is imperative that we learn to leave our children in better shape than what we were left. I wish I had somebody in here. Huh? Am I right today? We, we got to get to the point where we leave them in better shape than we were left. What happens? What happens? One generation works hard and struggles to get somewhere and accumulates a little and or sometimes much. 
uh, purchases a, a home and, and other things, which is good. And, uh, but the problem is, at the time the children are ready to leave home, rather than the parents being prepared to push them out and they go higher, there is the demonic act of starting over again. Can I get somebody? I said there is a demonic act of starting over. Y'all hear? It is evil and it is what destroys the family more than anything else. We have a lot. Uh, we have much land. We, uh, we got, we've had a whole lot to come into our hands as a people. We've had a whole lot of mules. Come on, somebody. Uh, we, we've had a whole lot of acres. Uh, we own homes, but uh, have not mastered transgenerational blessings, shifting that from one generation to the next generation. I bet you I'll get an amen somewhere. Uh, yeah, we got to understand that, that sons and daughters leave their parents' home only to start over again, renting an apartment, renting furniture, getting married and having to start over, finish college and having to start over in debt with student loans. It is the start over demon that is killing our families. I wish I could get somebody that will help me in here. It's a demon. Somebody say it's a demon. I, I, I know we got drugs and I know we got alcohol. Alcohol. I know we talk about sex and I, I know we talk about all those things that come against the family but I want to tell you where the real demon is the real demon is the fact that we don't transfer to the next generation to set them up to be successful and they got to start with that demonic spirit of starting over when they I can't get anybody in here a whole lot of systems are working against us, but uh, this is a system that we got to go back and take authority in and take control over. We must develop as a people a mindset to understand that it is not just what you are able uh, to accumulate here for yourself, but that's the power uh, in your wealth and your assets that, and that with which you have been blessed and thank God for your blessing uh, but is that uh, uh, transgenerational it, it ought to go uh, from one generation to the next generation no wonder uh, Proverbs 13 and 22 says a good man uh, leaves an inheritance to his children's children and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just we love to quote the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just but we don't back up to the beginning verse uh, that said a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. We got to get the whole word to you. And if you got to get the whole word, we like to quote what we like to quote that suits us. But what about the part that says we got to make sure we leave something for the next generation? We must develop a mindset to put a system in place so we can cut off the demon of starting over. Huh? Somebody say it's a demon. One generation dies and the next generation has to start over. Somebody prematurely dies and, and they are left to have to start over. It is demonic, it is ungodly, and it's downright sinful. I wish I had two or three. Why? Because God is a transgenerational God. He did not just bless one generation uh, for it to stop right there, but he established a system whereby the blessings uh, can flow from one generation to another. Huh? You got to understand, uh, he, he said he set it up so that the wealth could transfer, so the blessings uh, could transfer. Look at Abram, Abraham. God uh, told Abraham to, uh, to, to leave his father's home and that, that he was going to show him a place. And he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. Great people are going to come out of you. You can put it in your notes, Genesis 12, 1 through 3. And just put that in your notes and go back and read. He said, and listen, I'm going to bless you uh, that, that, that there, you're going to be blessed. And everybody that blesses you will be blessed. And anybody that curses you will be cursed. And you're going to be the one that's blessing throughout the generations. Do I have anybody in here? And then we go a little further in Genesis 13 uh, and verse 14. And, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now. 
Look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. Did y'all hear that? He didn't say, I just give to you for you to consume it up right now. He said, but I give it to you and your descendants. You know who the descendants are? Those who were uh, coming and emerging. Those were who were imminently on their way, who were not born yet, but he yet said, what I have done in you, I am not doing it just for you. I'm doing it so that those who are to come will be recipients. I wish I had somebody. And when Abraham and, and Sarah finally had a son, Isaac, and, and the time for uh, Abraham's death was drawing near, Abraham, read it in Genesis 25, 5 through 6, Abraham blessed Isaac. And when Isaac had lived in his life, he had twins, Jacob and Esau, and Esau was tricked by Jacob to get the blessing of the elder brother. The blessing of the elder brother was double uh, of what the younger brother would receive, but the blessing moved now. We got the blessing that came on Abraham that's already come through Isaac, and now it's getting ready to go to Jacob and Esau, and you will see that, that from there, uh, Esau's going to begin to bless, Jacob's going to begin uh, to bless. Bless his sons. And, and the, this concept continued throughout the generation. Jacob passed it to his son. It was a God-ordained process. It is a mentality of an heir. Each generation started better than the previous generation. So the power in wealth is not how much we accumulate, uh, not how much we establish, but uh, how much, not how much we have, the power is not that uh, you have had opportunity to work a great job and make good money and drive nice cars and own wonderful property. The power comes in where it can be transferred to the next generation so that they can start off better. What happens often is that uh, the generation starts and, and uh, maybe there's a business so buys property and, and there are th some things that uh, the, the current generation has but by the time it comes to leave it to the children it's already been second, third and fourth mortgaged and taxes owed on it or my God it's in such need until it becomes a curse rather than a blessing I bet you I'll get an amen before I finish this we must come to grips. Somebody said we got to come to grips. We got to come to grips, brothers and sisters, that we got to have an air mentality. That we are going to leave something as a legacy of some kind. And you got to recognize you're going to leave some kind of legacy. It's going to be good or bad. It's going to be a blessing or a curse. It's going to bring joy or sorrow. But you're going to leave something. Am I right? And we ought to desire that it will be a blessing. What's our problem? What, what's our problem? We don't think like heirs. We don't think like heirs. Let's, let's look. One problem is a lack of vision. We got to develop enough future vision uh, that we see the significance of following the word. I want my seed and the seed after my seed to be blessed. It, that, that ought to be what we want, right? That ought to be our desire. Uh, that ought to be our hunger and thirst that, uh, that my seed and my seed seed can be blessed. I want them to be blessed better than me. Is there anybody in here? Uh, uh, we, we have become so engrossed with the idea of the world that we forget uh, that we are not going to be around forever. Is that right? Vision helps. Helps one to anticipate, um, to forecast, to believe in the fact that you want to leave uh, your seed in better shape 
than you started. You know how you started when you got married and you were pulling stuff together and uh, you were going to the places to buy secondhand furniture and, and all that kind of stuff, you know. And, and then if you were not married, you started your apartment and you had to go and pull somebody something from here, sleeping on bean bags and, and uh, making uh, milk cotton furniture. Come on, somebody. You, you understand. And, and, and so since you understand how you started, Vision says, I want my seed to be ahead of the game. Vision says, I don't want them to have to struggle at the beginning as I did. I wish I had somebody. Vision says, if I can help them have a good beginning, uh, at least they have a greater chance of success in their marriages, in their life. At least they will have more time to serve the Lord, and they won't be scuffling so hard trying to make it. But we are often too short-sighted, and we lack vision for being air-minded people. Not only that, we got a problem of selfishness. We live in a society um, that is so self-centered uh, that parents will allow their children to suffer while they themselves look good. You, you ever seen parents out and they look wonderful? Mama running around and holding their hands up because they've been so manicured and feet so pedicured and they've been buffed and that they have to walk like that so you can see the nails. They, and, and they got wonderful glitter on them and all that. And they looking wonderful, got on a nice little cutie pie outfit. And then the children coming up behind them looking like uh, they got uh, bald knots, uh, hair patched one way and some kind of broken down little outfit and all that. What, 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 kind, of, what kind of foolishness is that? That, uh, you know, they, they, you, 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 you see it all the time that because we, we are selfish, they, uh, they are willing to allow sons and daughters to go without. Yet they have it all going on, my God. And listen, uh, fathers know that, uh, that there are children that, uh, that a mother is struggling trying to feed and trying to clothe her, uh, yet you the coolest thing in town. Can you put my clip up for me real quickly? Can you put my clip up? It's a quick clip. Take good note of this. A rooster and a hen and the biddies. Look what the mama's doing on the right. She, she, she dropping little food. They not big enough to get down in the pot themselves. She's getting it. She not even eating herself. She's dropping some for them. But look at the daddy rooster. He ain't looked up. Play it again. He ain't look, he just, he looked up swallowing, just still pecking, still pecking. Babies running around wanting something. They be like, we better go back over here with mother. Mother hadn't eaten one yet. She's just dropping it for them. Dropping it for them. And the daddy, look at him, sitting there with that big old red hat on his head and big gold collar on his neck. Look at them feet. Got them nice shoes on. And the baby's sitting there trying to make it. Mama's struggling. Mama can't even eat. And there you are pecking all around. You ain't dropped nothing. Ain't dropped no child support. Ain't bought no sneakers. You just consuming it all for yourself. And mama's struggling. I ain't even had a bite myself. My God, my feet hurt myself. I got seven biddies running around here. They came on your side. You didn't even as much as look around and give them a look at him. Try, let's go back over here because he sure ain't getting ready to drop nothing right here. He act like he don't even know us. He know. I don't know if them my children or not. I don't know if them my biddies or not. I better go for myself. That might not be mine. And mama stick. I wish I had somebody in here who would help me. And then, and then we had a nerd to wonder why you can't get in a restaurant on Mother's Day and you can go to a restaurant on Father's Day and you wouldn't hit a person if you threw a brick through there. Not all daddies. We got some noble, wise, caring, supportive daddies. Come on. Because I'm not a daddy basher. But I want to show us 
that, that sometimes we're just selfish and we got men that's walking around looking wonderful and not taking care of their seed, not caring whether they got lunch money, not caring whether or not they got shoes on their feet, as long as you look wonderful. Go on and look wonderful, look wonderful, but just make sure your seed looks wonderful too. Selfishness says, I work hard, I'm going to consume it on me. Selfishness says, uh, when I die, I'm not leaving anybody anything. I'm going to enjoy it all now. Selfish. Selfishness says, I'm not concerned about how uh, they're going to make it uh, when I'm gone. That's going to be their problem. So I'm going to live as large as I can now and let them worry about that later. Nobody gave me anything when I got started, so I ain't wanting to leave nobody anything. I'm going to catch. What does the Bible say? Remember now, Proverbs 13, 22, a, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Can I get somebody in here? What's wrong with us? Lack of vision and selfish. And then, and then uh, the next is uh, number three, we are overwhelmed by present realities. Overwhelmed by present realities. Uh, you are totally and, and when you think about it uh, we're talking about leaving something as a legacy, leaving an inheritance to your children, I don't have anything myself. I'm trying to make it myself. And you up talking about leaving something. We have become so overwhelmed by what we deal with on a regular basis that, that we have become too exhausted to even think about the possibility of leaving a legacy of blessing. There is a way to combat the realities. Isn't that right? Uh, and so we got to make sure that we understand that there is a way to combat the problems. And, and first of all, how can we combat it? Number one, continue the legacy that your parents left you. Keep it up. Remember now not to consume it all now. And if they did not leave you anything, maybe they didn't have anything to leave you, then you start it. All right? You have an heir mentality. An heir mentality, one who is a joint heir with Christ, understand that I received from God and I am a joint heir with Christ. And Christ came so that he could leave something for the seed who would come after him. That's an heir mentality. We have a slave mentality when we want to consume it all up now and forget about leaving something for the next generation. If you got to be the one to start it, you ought to decree prophetically. I'm going to get this thing started in my family. Maybe your children are already out. Maybe they're already gone. Maybe they're already married. But uh, you got to recognize that you can still uh, help be a blessing to them when you're gone. I wish I had somebody here. It is foolish to consume it all uh, and, and, and not leave uh, something. The, when the farmers are, are farming and they, 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 they gather the harvest, they always save some seed for the next time of planting. Then number two, uh, if we're going to combat it, we got to establish a system to create and transfer wealth. All right? You may not have stocks and bonds. You may not have land and property. Uh, you may not have a strong bank account. But you know what? You can open a term life insurance policy. And if not for anything else, but that your seed will not have to start over when you die and are gone. Get a policy. Insurance, but I don't sell insurance, so this is not benefiting me. Get an insurance policy and pay that term life. Pay that so that if something happens, first of all, your children will have enough to bury you. First of all, first of all, that your children will have enough to bury you. You ought to think about that. 
get your outfit together and everything. So y'all, I don't want y'all to be worried about that. They're running around here trying to figure out how they're going to bury you. And you got six wonderful cars sitting up in the driveway. Come on, somebody. And get you a term policy. Pay that. I've seen people get term policies. They pay them until a challenge comes. They will keep cable. They will keep cell phone. Come on, somebody. They're going to keep the charge card at the store, and they're going to make sure that all those things are done. And if anything's going to get cut, it's going to be the term insurance policy. And that ought to be the last thing you cut because you might die, and you might leave, and then your children will at least have some. I wish I had somebody. Y'all not, not feeling me this morning, but I'm going to preach it anyway. And see, there are people who understand, they think like heirs, even in church. There are people who think like heirs. You ought to get, everybody in the church ought to have a term policy where they have paid it to leave just for the church. What? Huh. Huh. I ain't leaving the church nothing. See, see. Our, our other folk understand how to bequeath, <laughs> how to leave endowments so that scholarship funds can go, building funds can go, so we don't have to be sitting here worried about day to day. Do you not know there's a church right over on Garrison, and that uh, and these women had much. They had much. They left. They left. Two sisters left five million dollars to the church, right here in Gastonia. And the Glenn Foundation has been established. They've been, given, they've been given grants year after year after year, and they've been given it off the interest. You may not have $5 million, but you can get you a, a $25,000 policy that says when I die, it goes to the church so that the church can continue on. Now listen, if you don't have a mindset for this, you don't have the air mindset, you got a slave mindset. Come on, come on. I'm going to walk a little heavy right here because, see, if we don't shift our mindset, at some point, we got to finance our own liberation and things are already set that can help make it happen that, listen, rather than uh, us trying to figure out how we're going to bury you, you ought to be trying to say, I'm going to try to make sure that the church can keep moving and whatever tithe and offering comes in, that's good. That can just go for ministry and all that. And we'll have enough to do whatever we need to do because the people have an air mindset because they're joint heirs with Christ. Can I get a clap right there? Can somebody, can you go ahead and be, I know you're a little disturbed right now. And I know your selfish mindset is saying, I ain't leaving the church none. They're not getting my money. But I'm trying to shift our mindset so that we can understand this is how we get better. This is how we can go now and build communities. This is how we can help fund what we want to do out in this area. And ha have housing out here. And transform lives in a real tangible way. I wish I had somebody in here. I know, I know y'all still looking around that. I'm going to let that sink in. I might leave my children or something. I sure ain't leaving the church nothing. Why not? Be like our counterparts. Huh? They have the, the vision and the mindset that joyfully. But Bishop, are you going to do that? Yes. Yes. But now, I, you know, I'm going to be watching now. I'm going to leave something to the church, but now don't y'all be rushing me. You're sending me no, no potion drinks and pies with stuff in it. <laughs> maybe I better, maybe I don't know if I should have said that or not. <laughs> Where my, you, you my taster, L L J, you my taster. <laughs> you the cup bearer. <laughs> We got to ask God to get us back on track with his purpose, with his plan. Where uh, was the uh, continuance uh, rather than the restarting? Where we can continue growing higher rather than restarting? If you have property, be sure uh, that you have established a system for it to get to your seed and not uh, to the courts and not to the government. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so many families have lost their inheritance because a will was not in place. It was not stipulated as to who got what. And at the death, rather than the family uh, drawing closer, 
they are fighting over what's left and pulling over and cussing each other out and fussing about who's going to get what and all that rather than it being a blessing and a joy to say mama and daddy left us this thank God the insurance man comes and say listen your mother and your father thought about you and they have a will and they've got this set up for you and you'll be so proud and appreciative uh, rather than sitting up talking about Lord I don't know how we going to bury mama I'm going to let it sink. Leaving good legacy is spiritual reality. It comes straight from the heavenly father. My God. It goes beyond the material side of life. We got to understand, uh, 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 thirdly, see, we must understand that we must not only leave them a good legacy of material things but spiritual wealth our lives ought to be as such godly nature that we make a spiritual transfer we must leave a spiritual spiritual heritage uh, the, the Jesus in us is transferred to the next generation they ought to want to have the spirituality that we have our lives before them should be so holy and consistent uh, with what we speak that our seed desires to walk in it. What is it that the children see in our adult Christians that causes them to say, just as soon as I can get a chance, I'm getting out of church, I'm getting out of religion, something has gone wrong when they don't desire to serve the God that we serve. Some kind of way, we must be sending mixed messages and not transferring a spiritual inheritance. I wish I get two or three. Somehow our examples have not been inviting enough to create a hunger in them. Elijah, let me quickly just close. Elijah was a mighty prophet, uh, one who walked uh, very closely to God, one who was anointed, one who spoke the truth, one who prophesied and spoke forth the things that God uh, instructed. Elijah understood the transfer of spiritual heritage, leaving what he has spiritually to his sons and daughters. The Bible says over in 1 Kings chapter 19 that uh, uh, in 19 through 21, you go back and read it uh, that Elijah uh, had just finished going through his own personal ordeal uh, at Mount Carmel and then running and hiding in the cave and God called him out and said, I got something that you need to do. You got to go now and you got to anoint the next person who's going to be in your place. And he goes and he throws his cloak over this man by the name of Elisha. And Elisha says to Elijah, he says, let me go back and tell my family goodbye so that I can come and follow you. And Elijah just keeps walking and said, I don't know what, uh, that's none of my business. And he keeps going. And then Elijah goes and, and he, uh, he makes a sacrifice, tells mom and dad and everybody goodbye. And then he begins to follow Elijah. All right. And, and uh, Elijah, Elisha becomes uh, or begins to walk and serve Elijah. We ought to be preparing the next generation spiritually to take over where we leave off. Rather than trying to get as far away from it as possible, we ought to be preparing. When they see the power of God and the benefit of relationship, they will be drawn to it. When they see consistent lives, they will love our God. Every saint ought to be mentoring and preparing somebody to follow. And sometimes it's direct and other times they watch from afar. There's somebody watching you and they, you may be helping to prepare them for what's next. Do I have anybody? Every leader ought to be preparing his replacement. Spiritual inheritance is more important than material heritage, but they are both e essentially spiritual. And so we discover then that you read in 2 uh, uh, Kings and uh, chapter number 2, you begin to see uh, where uh, Elijah, 
uh, had Elisha following him and uh, Elisha would come to a place and he would tell Elisha, he said, you stay here. The spirit has sent me uh, to this place and that place. And Elisha would say to him, no, uh, father, I'm going wherever you go. And he would follow him to that place. And, and then uh, he said uh, uh, he'd get to another place and, and he said, I want you to uh, uh, stay right here. Elijah said, stay here uh, to Elisha. And Elisha said, no, I'm going where you you go and he would follow him to the next place and, and and then Elijah came to a third place and and he said to Elisha he said you stay right here because the spirit is leading me to another place he said no wherever you go I'm going and so he would he followed him and they came down to the river and uh, Elijah took his cloak and struck the water and the water parted and they went across now when you read there the Bible says that uh, that there were some other prophets uh, who uh, saw Elisha following Elijah and they said to Elisha they said listen do you not know that your master is getting ready to leave you he said I know but be cool be quiet and then as they walked along Elijah and Elisha were walking and Elijah said to Elisha what is it that you want me to leave that I can leave for you and Elijah said what what is it that you would like elisha said i would like to have a double portion of your anointing and elijah said if you keep your eye on me that when i am taken up and you see it he said so shall it be but if i'm taken up and you don't have your eyes on me you're gonna miss it and for sure, as they were walking along, uh, the, Bible, the Bible says that, uh, that a whirlwind, the chariot, you remember we talk about the chariot uh, that was coming down, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. And, and the Bible said that uh, it was a whirlwind, and, and uh, Elijah got caught up in that whirlwind, and, and he was taken up. And the Bible said that Elijah saw it. And Elijah tore his clothes, and, and uh, it was a form of mourning, but he also caught the cloak. That was the robe. That was the covering, the cloak. He also caught, caught the mantle. They call it the mantle. He caught Elijah's mantle. Because he said, I want a double portion. Notice he didn't say, I want, the, I, I, want, I want a new this or new that. He said, I want a double portion of your anointing. Because he had seen the power of God on his father. He had seen the miracles. Uh, he had heard the words that were spoken. And he wanted it so much so, not that he was going to be glorified, but to carry on what God was doing in Elijah, uh, that the Lord uh, would use him as well. And so the Bible says that he saw it and he caught the cloak. And the Bible says he got the double portion. And so Elijah now has the cloak and the mantle of Elijah. There's a transfer spiritually that has taken place. Yeah, we got to make sure. See, this is an air thing. This is a mentality that now there's been a transfer and what was on Elijah is now on Elisha. And the Bible says that uh, he went down to the river. This is Elijah now. He said, I got the double portion of my father. And uh, he went down uh, to the waters and he struck the waters with the mantle and the waters opened up and it just lets us know that it was a transfer of spiritual heritage it is the desire of God to allow the blessings both of spiritual and material wealth to be transgeneration uh, heirs understand this that when you are an heir you have an heir mindset you understand that I got to get something to the next generation. It would be ungodly for me to consume it all for myself. Uh, it would not be ethical for me to have lived and worked and had and then not leave something for my seed. Seed, I can't get anybody to agree this morning. But it was uh, in uh, his plan for uh, from the very beginning that, uh, that God is a covenant committed God and he's the God that likes to leave you better off than where he found you isn't that right yeah it was the spirit of Christ 
uh, for the Ephesians tells us how uh, Jesus Christ came and, and he showed us that we were accepted in the beloved uh, and that we received an inheritance from uh, what Jesus Christ did. Uh, aren't you glad this morning that Jesus found us in bad shape? But when he left us, he left us in greater shape. He found us in a mess, um, but uh, he left us and uh, he made a sacrifice that put us in a better place. He found us broken and battered, uh, but he died to fix us. He found us bound in sin, uh, but he set us free and those in whom the sun sets free, the Bible says, are free indeed. He found us condemned and guilty, but he died to set the captive free. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise, for it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so, but he looked beyond my faults and saw my knees and I don't know about you this morning but I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me how marvelous the grace that caught my fallen soul he looked beyond all my faults and saw my knees because he is a legacy leaving God he wants you better now than you were before he came to raise you up where you were all broken down he came to leave something in your life he wants to make sure you can go higher is there anybody in here who wants to go higher well thank God you got a good God you got a good daddy he wants to leave you something that's why he sent Jesus Christ and that's why you ought to praise his name because Jesus came to make it possible and that you don't have to live in the same shape you've been. He wants to put you back together again. Is there anybody in here who thanks God that he's a legacy leaving God? He left us the cattle on a thousand hills. Since it belongs to him, I got a part of the inheritance since he owns everything and he has given it to his sons and daughters look at your neighbor and say neighbor that's you and me he wants us blessed he wants us highly favored he wants us to go higher because he's the God who understands transgenerational blessing not only material things but spiritual things is there anybody in here who understand I better stop y'all not with me this morning but I wish I had two or three people who would just give God a praise and say God I thank you because you're working in my favor I thank you because you brought me from a long way I have not seen ear have not heard neither has it entered the heart of man the good things he has in store for you my favorite verse is now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all you're able to ask or think according to the power that's working in you slap your neighbor high five say neighbor God wants you blessed God wants you healed God wants you set free that's why Jesus came to make the transfer I was sinking in sin deep and far but I'm so glad I'm so glad that Jesus understood I'm an heir I gotta leave something for my children he left us salvation and now we are the heirs of salvation and we can sing blessed assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine I got what's in the eternity but he wants to bless me right now because he's a God who will leave something for you say yes say yes now give him praise give him praise give him praise give him praise Give him praise, give him praise. It takes a certain mentality 
to think like an heir. An heir always thinks about the next generation. At some point, you, 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 I am, I'm not rich, I don't have anything, but I want to create a way that I can leave something. Maybe I have not been the best example to my sons and daughters and grandchildren, but now I can go back and straighten it so that they can have the heritage spiritually. It's a shame for us to always talk about how they did in church and how we had to do this and how we had to do that. They kept us in church and then we set ours free to do what they want to. We set them free for the computer to raise them. We set them free for the television to raise them. We, while we're in church, we set them free and they can do what they want to. But we always talk about, boy, I thank God for my mama and dad and grandmama who kept uh, hands on me. But you took yours off of yours. Because you forgot. You forgot. Grandmama knew we got to make a transfer. Grandpa knew we got to make a transfer. We got to get this thing in them. If not, the devil's going to take over. Now we're talking about it's a shame what the devil's doing to these young folks. Yeah, because we, we set them free and gave them to them. We put them in the, in the devil's hands because we forgot how to be a spiritual transfer, transgenerational. I ain't leaving nothing for them. They ain't doing but make a mess over it. Well, you made a mess. Is there, is there anybody who can te testify of all the messes you made out of some money? Good God, if I could have back a quarter of the stuff I messed up, I'd have me something for sure. Good God. So don't go getting arrogant now. I ain't leaving nothing for them. You just you t tell them where to put it. Tell them how, what to do with it. Say, God, show me. I know this is prophetic for many of us that I'm not in the position now. But prophetically, I heard you today, Bishop. And I might not be there today, but you can rest assured that if I don't get another suit, I'm getting ready to do something to help my seed. If I can't get another car and a car payment, I'm going to make sure that if I don't have the ducats to leave them, I can at least leave them in a term life policy. That they can get... $100,000, you pay $19 a month, and they can have $100,000, $230, $75 a month, cable bill, and you could leave your children better off than you started. Get over the attitude. My mom and them, didn't, they didn't understand that. And all they had to do, was, all they had to give was Jesus. Thank God my daddy didn't have anything to leave me, and, uh, uh, but he left me Jesus. I thank God that he left me Jesus. He wasn't rich. He didn't, he didn't leave me. I don't, I don't have a whole bunch from what he left. I, you know, it was a little something. But can I say this? I don't want, I, please, please do not, because there are too many people who have done it for it to be personal. I do not like to throw anything that would be felt as personal from the pulpit. And I know people are sensitive, and I know people who have done this, but I want to correct this. And we got to correct it by being air minded. GoFundMe is not barrel insurance. I'm not saying that to be hard on anybody who may have done that. But too often, we see when something suddenly happens, there's a GoFundMe trying to get up enough to bear it. Please, let's do now proactively. We had to do that. Thank God there was a GoFundMe. But we're going to do better because we got an heir mentality. Jesus came. He said, you are no longer son. Those who follow me are my children and they are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And Christ is one who thought as an heir to leave he went through hardship to leave you something he went through suffering to leave us something we we are too stubborn to be inconvenienced to leave our seed something because we don't think like heirs if you get it in your spirit and that's your desire god will work it out i promise you he'll work it out you you not eat out one good time in the month, and you got enough to cover your insurance. Don't let that lapse. That's the first thing that goes. 
the thing that can bless your children is the first. You are, you ought to scrape. If you got to get another job to pay for an insurance policy because you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to leave them, that's what you ought to do. Make the sacrifice like Jesus made to leave a spiritual and a material legacy. Come on, everybody. If you're looking for dynamic worship, inspirational teaching, and a friendly atmosphere, you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia, North Carolina. For more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.